this episode of Climbing Chronicles, we're in Valence in southern France for another World Cup stop. Can climbing legend Jakob Schubert win his eighth World Cup victory in a row? We also accompany renowned adventurer Stefan Glovac on his expedition around the world. All this and more from the world of climbing. German climber Stefan Glovac is in Venezuela, where he is looking to conquer the north face of Acapan Tapui. With these expeditions, I find it doesn't take much to make me truly happy as a person. All I need is a safe place to camp, a warm, waterproof sleeping bag, and a hot meal at the end of the day. When I'm out on an expedition for maybe two months, to conjure up a piece of chocolate is an absolute luxury, and I don't need anything more while I am out here. With three victories at the legendary Rockmaster and many other successes, Stefan Glovac is the most successful competition climber in Germany. His competitive career finished in 1993, and now he stays fit for his expeditions. I guess that curiosity is my drive for everything. If I wasn't curious, then we wouldn't have been traveling around in British Guiana and Roima Tepui in Venezuela. But I think that when a person stops living curiously, then they can no longer make such adventures. So I think the curiosity and passion for what you are doing is the only true foundation on which any action is based. With such passion for climbing, he often has to compromise on being with his family. I don't necessarily want them to live with me. I'm almost too selfish. But ultimately, one must be selfish, otherwise you could never achieve these goals. If I got too settled with my personal life, I could never do the things I want to do. Valence in southern France. This is where the world's top climbers are preparing for the eighth lead climbing World Cup of the year. The challenge for the 75 athletes? A climbing route they know almost nothing about. The core of the event is simple. The climber who reaches the highest point wins. World Cup favorite Jacob Schubert expects a lot from himself. As usual, I know Valence. I've been here once already in a youth World Cup. Every seat in the house is full, so it'll be a great atmosphere. I'll try and offer the best show, because to me that makes it insanely fun. The Austrian must reach 15th place today in order to win the overall World Cup. So far, he has won all seven World Cups this year and thus holds the world record. Never before has a climber managed so many wins in a row. The pro that he is, he's still aiming for the podium today. His early event form, though, lets him down as he only manages 41 handles. When he is not traveling the world, Stefan Glovac is busy administering his climbing company. He founded it 12 years ago with a climbing friend, and he puts it all down to an excess of wine. The next morning we found a note where we had written all our plans for a new business. In addition to all the red wine stains, the name Red Chili was also written down. We're both Red Hot Chili Pepper fans, so we thought this was a good idea. Although we were in a total delirium when we came up with the name, we decided that our company should be called Red Chili. Footwear was where Stefan thought he could start out his business. We were pretty naive in a way to simply go to Italy with a handful of drawings and ask a shoe manufacturer if they could build us these shoes. They just laughed it off and said it would be easy. And so this next step was easy as well. Stefan's climbing career began in Oberau in Garmisch-Patenkirchen. It was actually the best location for me at that time. I was 13 or 14 when I started climbing. I could climb where my parents lived. It was a bike ride from the nearest town, and I would cycle through the storms and snow in the winter or in the summer when the weather was hot. I spent my entire youth climbing here. Stefan is now bored of most of the trails there. I've been behind this traverse, I think, a few thousand times. It is still good to climb. I know it so well now, just like before. Every sinew, every touch. But I still have nostalgic memories of this place.
back to Valence for the lead climbing World Cup. The semi-final is commencing. Jacob Schubert's failure has left the door wide open for one of his biggest competitors, Spaniard Ramon Julian Puigblanc, who is just behind Schubert in the world rankings. Ramon manages nine more handles than Jacob. Up next is home crowd favorite Manuel Romain, who is third in the overall World Cup rankings. Despite home advantage, he only manages to reach 46 handles, which allows favorite Jacob Schubert to advance to the finals. I now think about the World Cup all the time. I was thinking that now I need only 15th place to win, and somehow I forgot that I should really focus on the competition. I'm now very happy that I'm in the finals. I'm now secure as the overall World Cup winner. I'm super happy, and now I don't need to put any pressure on myself to gas it up the last part. The final, though, will be a much tougher proposition for the climbers, as the route is made trickier. The athletes may look at the route for up to six minutes before the race. Then they have to go behind the scenes in the so-called isolation zone. This is so they don't have the chance to learn from the other competitors' mistakes. This is a custom Jacob Schubert knows all too well. Today, everyone knows about indoor climbing walls. Competitions are always held on artificial walls. This was not always the case, as technical director of the legendary rock master in Arco, Italy, explains. I prepare the first old in at home. Try with uh, what is this uh, material dash, and to cover with different things, salt, uh, su uh, sugar, and so on. And this was a really strange thing because I cook this in my house. Today's artificial handles are made in all colors, shapes, sizes, and structures by guys like Gerhard Honhagel and Nando Plotzenede. Light handles or jugs are somewhat more difficult than bars or slopes. This is a grip handle on which you really must press hard. That's probably something for athletic fitness specialists rather than climbing. The production process of shaping a model is an art that requires notable climbing experience. You're always looking back on your work thinking this looks quite good, so what can be improved? After doing this process a few times, you stand back and figure out whether you're satisfied or not. Sometimes you're happy, sometimes you're not. Each handle is unique. The surface structure is crucial for climbing. The models are made from silicone molds. For the handles, there are two different materials. We have one for the classic handle, which is made using polyester. For high performance instead, we use graphite. It's like stone or rock. This material is polyurethane, which is sometimes very hard. It is also elastic on the other side to ensure that it doesn't break. The advantage of this is that the handles can be screwed onto an even surface. For example, on a textured climbing wall, which you can really dress well, and it won't break. Pro climbers in Innsbruck advise the grip manufacturer as one of the best, one of whom is two-time world champion and Boulder World Cup champion Anna Stoll. Stefan Glovac is on Baffin Island, on the northernmost point of Canada. So there are two options. Over here there are no cracks, which could be difficult, or over there where it seems to be more structured. So my favorite is over there. On his journeys, he carries a constant companion. Fear is a very important factor in this game because it's always just a signal that something is wrong, and this is something I can't afford to ignore. Using kites, he goes to the cliffs that drop directly into the sea before Baffin Island. For me, with the first ascent of a route, I like to play a little bit, like Christopher Columbus discovering a place for the first time. It's like breaking into a sea of rock where you do not yet know what to expect. And that's the big attraction. If you have climbed a wall once before, then you already know what to expect. Then I can call them or send an email and ask them what to do or how to avoid making mistakes. Of course, the wall isn't anywhere near as attractive to me as conquering an unknown wall. Back from the expedition, Stefan seeks to motivate others with his lectures. 
And no matter where you're mountain climbing in the world, you've hardly reached a peak until you see the next destination on the horizon. Even in a figurative sense, that's where you say, man, I should really climb that again. In this context, it's no wonder that Stefan performs better outside than in competitions or in the climbing gym. Back in Valence for the World Cup in lead climbing. Time for the final. Jacob Schubert is on the wall. In the semifinals, he only managed sixth place. And in the grand finale, he makes a mistake. I actually felt very good. I was there on such a long, dark passage, which is very bad for your feet. It was very slippery, so I wanted to move and I slipped. I got my foothold up and then slipped again. These things shouldn't happen, but they do. Now on the wall is Canadian Sean McCall. He looks focused. This is his first World Cup season. McCall manages to get to the 38th handle. Now it's Spaniard Ramon Julian Puigblanc's turn. The man in second place overall has already won the semifinals, but is looking to go all the way. In the final, he makes it to handle 39, and with it, he takes first place. I'm really satisfied. The whole season, I've been unable to reach the top step of the podium. And now here in Valence, I've managed to reach the top, and it feels great. The podium, therefore, is made up of Romain Julien Puigblanc of Spain, Canadian Sean McCall, and Sachi Ama from Japan. Next time on Climbing Chronicles, World Cup newcomer Sean McCall will look to achieve his first victory in the competition. And we visit multiple Boulder World Champion Anna Storr in Innsbruck. All this and much more on the next episode of Climbing Chronicles.